Hello and welcome back to Curlin the Colonizer. I am Robot Genie and we're off. Yeah, I got rid of the UI mod, uh, the bigger text. It was hurting my head. Uh, I like this better. I don't know. I'm used to it. If, uh, you know, if you really feel like you like the better UI mod, if it's uh, really better for viewing, um, you know, significantly better or something, make sure to leave something in the comments. Um, it really makes a difference for viewing it. I, I would consider going back. Of course, I don't expect to get comments on it for quite some time, so the next, <laughs> the whole series now will probably not have it. Especially since right now I'm doing a couple video recording sessions in a row, so. Anyway, we're just, uh, we're just culture converting. We, to be honest, we're kind of, uh, waiting around here to, uh, oh, good. So we're doing the whole religious idea group first. Uh, but we're kind of waiting around here to, uh, to get, um, we need admin tech 14. And then we need to, uh, get, start getting exploration ideas. Uh, so we're, we're kind of waiting around to colonize, expanding a little bit in this area, um, within within the rules. Wow, it's gonna be another 20 years before Danzig's culture converted. That That's pretty insane. Um, there's a war between Muscovy and Austria on my ruler's death. Uh, we could be under a personal union. Oh, that sounds, sounds terrible. We don't wanna be under a personal union. But don't don't worry. We just turned we just turned 15 with the young age of 15. Maybe we can get some concubines. That would be good. If only we could mix CK2 and uh, and Europa Universalis 4. It'd be great. I'd love to go raid as Curland and like force concubine. You know, the Hansa's women. That uh, you know that would that'd be fun. I'm sure that sounds uh sounds as terrible as I think it sounds. I'm going to get hate mail. Right, <laughs> and because we're culture converting, we can't build trade stuff. That's no good. Oh, we'll build a trade depot there. I want. I want to. I like to specifically build all the way up to custom houses in uh, in estuaries and important centers of trade, because you get all these bonuses to uh, like uh, trade value modifier is is actually different than local trade power. So local trade power is a really good modifier for having on the estuaries. Uh, so it just it just kind of makes sense to uh, local trade power plus fifty percent. Um, yeah, to just kind of build all the way up on these things, and then you can have really powerful trade in your home node without anyone, without anything protecting it. I mean, if you're on one of these really nice nodes that everybody wants a piece of, like uh, Lubeck over here, then you own all the estuary provinces. Sometimes it's not enough, and you do actually still want boats there because everybody else will be sending their boats because there's just so much money. But uh, we're not in one of those. Maybe we'll get over to Lubeck, I don't know. Lubeck is, is a way better trade node than our trade node. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to grab uh, trade ideas after, um, you know, maybe at like, I don't know, 22, I guess. We're going to be taking just a lot of diplomatic ideas. I want a lot of diplomatic ideas. I don't know how I'm going to support all that. But it would just be um, really useful because we're going to be in the new world and in the new world it's probably, oh look at this, Castile is, has already started. Um, it's probably going to be really beneficial for us to, uh, what is it, uh, to collect from trade down here um, because our home trade node can't even get the money that comes from the new world which is kind of, you know, it's kind of bad for us. 
Uh, so, you know, there's like two options, either take over Lubeck or, uh, which is going to be hard given the restrictions I put on the campaign here, um, or we collect from trade down there, which sounds more realistic. We're going to have a lot of boats. We have taken a lot of naval ideas on purpose. I, I wanted to have a very strong navy. Um, very strong navy consisting of mostly light ships. Uh, <laughs> if it's big enough, it'll uh, still be very powerful. So yeah, you can see here our force limit is 45. Oh, we can actually build one more, so we'll probably do that. But uh, currently we're sitting at uh, sixth place in the world in terms of navy. And uh, we just, we don't have a ton of coastline, especially, well not really compared to Portugal, but compared to Castile and England with all their good ideas, you know, like in even France. France has a way bigger coastline than us, and I, I think we have more ships than France. Yeah, totally. Uh, I mean, we have so, we we do get some national ideas that benefit ships. We also get some national ideas that um, uh, push us towards colonization. So we get fifteen percent colonial range here, which is really nice. That's nice that it allows us to um, go out there. Now, if you were like, let's say insult Brandenburg we can do that um, if you were say let's or let's say like England or Castile or Portugal and uh, and you're gonna play the colonization game you would probably take it as your first idea group um, but what we're doing is we're taking it as our um, as our fourth because if we took it as our first idea group <laughs> it wouldn't have made a difference we wouldn't have been able to get over there uh, our colonial range, it's so far away. So it's a different distance of 570, and our colonial range is 425. So if we had taken it already, actually, if we had taken it as a third idea group, we would be able to start right now if we had the plus 50% colonial range. So it might have been a better idea to take it third um, rather than fourth. But we're going to take it fourth. We're going to come in a little bit late, and then we're just going to fight a bunch of wars against the great powers over there. Uh, and hope that works out and try to finagle our way and get you know get a really strong colony down there get control like all the Americas uh, so we want to improve defenses in some some gala oh that's our capital so yes oh absolutely I mean I would anyway because that's a great mission I love army tradition but uh, it's even more important in our capital to do that. Uh, and then let's uh, let's build some manpower buildings. Manpower buildings are very important, especially when we're not gonna... If you're gonna blob, manpower buildings are still important, but not as important, because at some point in the game you're just gonna have like hundreds of thousands of manpower and uh, none of that's gonna ever have mattered anymore. But for us, we're always gonna be I mean, later on, we, we could be as big as, like, this, you know, uh, holding most of Lithuania and Poland, but it's going to take us a while to get there, given the rules, and uh, that's still not super big. I mean, it's big, but, like, it it's only, it'll be, like, we can be, like, maybe France size with less desirable provinces, and Russia's still going to be bigger than us. And our colonies will never help us in a war on the mainland, so... It's gonna be good to have some of that, some of that stuff. You know, it'll be a little bit different. Normally, when I get into uh, the later game, I've already blobbed out, so um, like <laughs> I don't need alliances. I don't need any of that stuff uh, because I'm so big um, that I can just kill everyone. But uh, in this one, we're gonna need to continue to make alliances, continue to continue to play it. Uh, it's in a more interesting way uh, in the late game rather than just uh, constantly fabricate claims, declare war, and <laughs> and win, kind of. Um, that's what the late game has been for me recently. Because uh, um, uh, I started recording on the Nas Jihad series, but uh, directly before I did that, I played um, the Golden Horde? No, I played, yeah, well, I played the Golden Horde, uh, which, you know, 
ended up being a giant blob too. I had like 400 provinces. And then uh, before that I played Genoa, which I started out playing as, and Genoa is really cool to play as like a trade game, because you get all these missions like conquer Tunis and, you know, uh, greed in Gibraltar, get Gibraltar, uh, get Tangiers, get Alexandria, get Constantinople, like all these, get Ragusa, all these like really cool uh, um, things. And then, but somewhere around like 1600, 1650, I owned most of Italy anyway, and I already had a hundred mercantilism, so I decided to just form Italy and uh, kind of conquer all the Ottomans and half of France and <laughs> all this stuff. And with Italian ideas, maybe I didn't have a ton of uh, ton of provinces, as many provinces as like 300 that game, but with Italian ideas and all that rich land, uh, very powerful. Not to mention with France cut in half. Yeah. Just ends up being easy. Maybe not easy getting there, but it's certainly easy once you're there. In fact, Genoa is a really fun and challenging game, and uh, I really am liking Merchant Republics a lot uh, after playing them a couple times. Uh, I had a really fun game as Venice, getting the uh, achievement for uh, the Venetian Sea, uh, and only holding nine provinces. That was a lot of fun. But I think um, maybe even next game, I want to try to uh, dominate trade in, in the Mediterranean as Ragusa. I think they're probably the Merchant Republic um, in the European zone, including Novgorod, that's in the worst position. That I don't think anyone's in a worse position than Ragusa. So it would be fun to dominate the uh, Mediterranean trade as Ragusa. Kind of the underdog, the underdog thing. You know, and especially with Ragusa, if you if you've ever played Venice, you'll know that right off the bat you get a mission to um, get a claim on Ragusa and take Ragusa. Like right as you go into the game, one of your missions is like just go destroy Ragusa. And uh, as Venice, that's entirely possible because Ragusa has like three units and you have like twenty two. So it's just entirely unfair. Uh, we're gonna gain one base tax in our province rather than gaining uh, one stability because one base tax is uh, going to help us over time rather than yeah I think uh, I think I like that more stability is not as permanent as one base tax I like the idea of uh, boosting our provinces we got claims on everything Lithuanian now who are they allied with they're allied with Denmark Poland and Genoa um, we can't grab any other provinces yet. Now we can grab one, but when I attack them, I want to be able to grab two. I want to be able to grab these two. Make our borders look a little bit nicer. I would also like their capital, but uh, that's a little bit harder to grab. You can't just like can't just like grab their capital. Oh look, and Ukraine exists, so Lithuania might just get like half destroyed, half eaten up by Ukraine. It'd be really nice to get them as a vassal. That'd be kind of hard. Actually, they're very close to want to accepting vassalization from us. If we were the same religion, they would accept vassalization. So uh, I think I'm going to uh, focus on trying for that because if we get a um, oh, we already have a diplomatic reputation advisor. I was gonna say because if we get another, if we can get more diplomatic reputation, so we can get two from stability. And doing that and improving relations and the combination of all that might be enough to get us a, um, a diplomatic vassalization of Ukraine. Now the ex the expansion ideas give you diplomatic relations, not diplomatic reputation. So the only ones that give you diplomatic reputation are influence and diplomatic. And, I mean, diplomatic reputation, or diplomatic influence, sorry. Yeah, dip oh, no, sorry, yeah, no, it is diplomatic reputation. The idea is called diplomatic influence. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, 
you can't really uh it used to be much better because it would um, speed up integration of uh, vassals, but uh, it still can't be overlooked. It's still very useful. It also makes uh, the difference in um, whether or not people will accept your alliances. You know, sometimes you're just right on the border there, and having good diplomatic reputation can only helps. Fifteen sixty three. Fifteen sixty three. Uh, I wanna. Do my allies need to fight any other wars? I want to. I want to join and help you fight wars. Now, because we're not fighting as many wars here, it's really nice that we're getting a couple of things that give passive prestige, because that means our prestige won't drop as fast. You know, for war muckering, and we're at war all the time, our prestige is gonna be just always at a hundred unless I'm accepting demands from rebels. Um, but when we're not warring all the time, it's not going to always be at 100. It's just how it works. I am not going to take a military idea until after level 12. Level 12 is really important because it's a tactics level. It's the first game in a while. First time in a while I haven't had a large coalition against me. In fact, everybody seems to just kind of like me. Or at least not really hate me. I wish Pomeridia would accept vassalization. I wonder if the Teutonic Order would. That'd be cool. They might. Teutonic Order is a member of the Empire, is not a huge negative modifier. So part of the, um, part of our little uh, rule set here is, uh, I can have as many vassals as I want, but I can only integrate one at a time, and I can only integrate if I am under, if I have a free province, right? So only if um, I have under five provinces that um, are not my culture, which would be the case now. So if Pomerania was my vassal now, and I could integrate them, I could integrate them right now. Oh, look at this. Ukraine oh, gained some legitimacy, yes. Ukraine's being attacked by Lithuania. Can I enforce peace? Because I want to enforce peace. So are they just at war with Lithuania? Yeah, it looks like it. Lithuania, I mean, Ukraine's gonna be my vassal. Can I send it? Oh, I'm close. I'm close. I need, Ukraine needs to have a higher opinion of me. I should have proclaimed a guarantee. Wow, lost claims on a lot of provinces there. I wonder if I got all those from a mission. I thought I had. I thought I staggered them and got them all in different missions. I wonder why I lost them all at once. It's a little weird. Can they accept vassalization while they're in a war? I don't know. All important questions. We might lose them here and have to wait until they come back. Oh, that same thing happens. Sometimes I've been sending a diplomat and and like it doesn't get rejected, it doesn't get accepted and it just sets off the monthly timer and is like, oh you gotta wait now. And nothing really happens. Look at that. Now they looks up vassalization. Wow. That would be super good, because then we could feed Ukraine provinces to Lithuania, <laughs> and then we could annex Lit Ukraine, and then then we'd be then we'd be pretty big, we'd be pretty big right here. But then we'd have to culture convert them all before we could uh, continue on, and that would mean we could culture convert some of these Lithuanian provinces if we removed Lithuania from the map. That'd be be super good. So I'm in for that. Uh, 
get you to be a vassal. Come on, you want to be a vassal. Well, he already wants to be a vassal. And now we can enforce peace. So we're going to do that. Yeah, enforce peace with Ukraine. Rejected, yes. Of course you're rejected. Um... Uh, none of these missions are good right now. So this time I'm going to remember we're going to war. We're changing to the war thing. Um, I should have raised my maintenance already, but I didn't. And so we're just against Lithuania. Ukraine's at low. And uh, hopefully they don't separate peace here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to the war goal. You know what? Actually, 21 minutes, it looks like a good time to end the episode. So if you're liking this, make sure to like and or subscribe to my uh, video and channel. And uh, see you next time.